Hey, it's Minute Book Reports, and this is my one book book haul video for the next book that I'm gonna read for this YouTube channel. And it's actually a series called A Series of Unfortunate Events, which is a 13 book collection. And I just want to share some of my thoughts going into the series, what I think it's gonna be about, and what I hope to get out of reading the series. So why did I pick this series? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first is that the series is fairly long. It's 13 books, which for me, I think would be the longest book series that I've ever read or that I'm ever going to read. And I, I usually typically pick shorter series if I pick a, a series of books. I think Harry Potter might have been the longest series of books I actually ever read that have one continuous storyline. For me, most of the time I get bored when I read a series that's too long. And when I first saw that this was 13 books, I thought to myself, I don't want to read 13 books about the same characters. It's, it's it, 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 To me, I, I'd rather have bigger books that have a, a very very nice storylines but but fewer books so that i can just read the series you know have closure with the stories and then move on but when i saw the length of each of these books i figured okay well it seems to be very episodic which is fine you know i i don't mind reading episodic uh stories a, a, as long as they're they're somewhat com complete and i feel like when you have a series that is 13 books long i assume they're, they're going to have two storylines there's going to be a a very sort of short-term storyline which is going to be self-contained in the book and then there's going to be storylines that tend to be long-term that that tend to carry throughout the entire series very much like a television show where you have a episode wrap-up that will have the storyline for that particular episode and it finishes by that by that episode but you're going to have these greater longer storylines that that sort of travel throughout maybe an entire season Season or an entire series. The second reason is that there is the Netflix show. I've never seen the Netflix series, but from what I've heard, it's pretty close to the books, which to me is amazing because nowadays, sometimes when you have a base material, when it translates to television or to movies, they don't always stick with it. And then there's this huge sort of, oh, the books were better or, 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 or oh, the TV show disrespected or the movie disrespected the, the main audience. But with the Netflix series, I feel like they're able to do a lot of sort of creative things that maybe are more faithful and more in line with the actual storyline of the books. I think there's a fine balance between using and staying sort of committed to what the source material says and then sort of catering that storyline to general audiences. What I hope to do is read each of the books and then sort of talk about it in the context of the Netflix series or the Netflix series in the context of the books. I, I want to always make sure that the book is the base source. It is the sort of the foundation of that story and then talk about the Netflix series in that context. From what I hear, they dedicate two episodes of the Netflix series per book, which to me is very interesting that they would do that. I'm not sure how long the episodes are, but if that's the case, then to me that shows that they're dedicated to at least telling a complete story because I think that if you're gonna try and tell one whole story per book, either the book is very short and simple or you're cutting corners. But by dedicating at least two episodes per book, it shows that they're taking their time and they really want to develop these characters and, and hopefully include a lot of the storylines that were in the original book. So what do I think the book is going to be about? I really don't know. I only have seen the cover of the first book. I, I know that the covers of the other books are very unique. I think they're like hand-drawn or something like that. But I really don't know what the story is going to be about. I think it's about a family and it's about some bad man, and that's about as much as I know. I'm not sure how they're gonna stretch this out to 13 books if that's the only two characters. So I assume that these children are gonna have multiple challenges and they're sort of gonna move together in some kind of story. But what that story is, I am not sure. Based on the title, it sounds like their life is pretty bad. So it seems like a lot of their challenges will be very gloomy. And, and that's sort of the tone and what I expect out of this story. Based on just the artwork alone, it seems to be very gray and dark and sort of shaded. So I'm hoping that these characters sort of emerge out of this sort of gloomy environment and, and they achieve whatever it is that they're trying to do. So what about the book cover? For me, the book cover sets the tone for what the book will be about. And in this case, the series will be about. I really like the art style. It's a very 
children but not quite children style. In a world where we get a lot of our animation and drawings and art from computers, it's nice that this has that hand-drawn feel. It's it's kind of rough and, and, and kind of dark and very plain, but I like that. It, and it's very consistent amongst all the books from what I've seen. Again, I haven't taken a look at all the covers, but from at least the first few covers, it looks good. So what do I hope to get out of this series? Well, like I mentioned before, this would be the longest series of books that I've ever read, and I'm looking forward to sort of staying committed to that series. You know, it's it's very hard, I think, to keep a reader sort of interested in, in stories and in characters for that long with that number of books. Now, I know the books are very short, and I think that that makes it a lot easier to, to be able to continue from one book to the next, but I'm trying to figure out in my mind how how can you have 13 different stories and make them all connected? And I guess I, I'm assuming that they're going to be linear. They're all going to be right after the other. So having them all in chronological order, how can you make a long series like that? I tend to read very fast. And so it's going to be nice to know that the entire story is going to be stretched out through 13 books. And no matter how fast I read them, it's still going to be divided into 13 stops. And what I think that does is it encourages me to slow down, to take my time, and to really appreciate each tale as it's being told rather than just trying to get from the start of the story to the end. And lastly, after reading this series and then watching the Netflix series, I'm hoping that that will give me more confidence in how Hollywood and, and other media can stay close to the actual books. I've always been amazed at the changes that are made when you translate a book and you try to adapt it to a movie or a television show. And the fact that nowadays, a lot of the source materials seem to be twisted or they leave a lot of things out. But I'm hoping that with the Netflix series, because they've taken two episodes per book, that they will sort of stay in line more so with the book material while imagining and interpreting it in, in sort of interesting and fun ways for the TV show for general audiences. I'm not really sure who the TV show is meant for. I didn't grow up with this book or this series, so I'm reading these books now and I'm watching this show now. And so as I watch the show, I'm going to hopefully understand who this series is for. So those are my thoughts going into a series of unfortunate events. I'm very excited to read this long story, but it's short stories, but a lot of different books. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about that. So thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.